All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're going to be talking about how to set up a Synology NAS as a DNS server for your entire local network. This way, instead of having to type an IP address, you can simply type in a host name that you create to get to any of your local assets. This can also be great for instances where your Synology.me address does not take you to your NAS when you're on your local network. That's because your router is getting confused because it's essentially pointing to itself and it's not forwarding the traffic properly. All right, so first let's talk about what DNS is. DNS stands for Dynamic Name Service. And it basically allows you to convert a name, such as www.google.com, into an IP address. That way, people don't have to memorize a bunch of IP addresses. They can just remember easy to remember words and phrases. It also means that the IP address of the service can change. As long as the DNS forwards to the new IP address, it doesn't matter. So every time you type www.google.com into your browser, your computer basically reaches out and asks itself, hey, do I know where www.google is? If not, it asks your router. And if your router doesn't know, it asks another what's called root name service. First it goes to dot, then it goes to com, then it goes to Google, then it goes to www. And that way, you figure out exactly what the DNS name is. Then because these are so protected, there are a lot of very special encryption keys that have to go on because if I were able to change the address of google.com for everyone, I would be able to start stealing their information very easily. But that's probably for another video. So running a local DNS server can actually be great because you can set it up to cache these requests. So say a bunch of people in your house are always going to Google. That's really normal, right? Well, you can have www.google.com cache in your NAS for an hour. That way, if one person requests it, then the Synology will keep it in its cache, and the next time somebody requests it, it'll immediately give back the IP address, saving significant time. Actually, one of the things that slows down web the most is actually DNS resolving, because you have to go through that entire chain from dot to com to Google to www. And that is a lot of requests that each take time. And so by limiting those requests, web pages load much snappier especially ones with a lot of different ads on them. But if you want to limit those, you can actually use what's called a pie hole, and I'll be doing a video on that at one point. All right, so now let's just go in and set it up. The first thing you're going to want to do is log into DSM. We're going to go into the package center. And all you have to do is type in DNS into the search bar and install it. The 53 is because port 53 is what's used for DNS, if you're ever wondering. All right, so once that's installed, we're just gonna go ahead and open it. All right, so now we've got our DNS server loaded up. And we're gonna see right here that there's this thing called zones. So DNS is based off of zones. So you know how I said earlier that when we resolve www.google.com, we first go into dot, which is the root one, then into com, then into Google, then into www. Each one of those is a zone, essentially. And so we're going to be creating our own zones. I would only recommend doing this for names that you own yourself, because that way you don't accidentally break any sites. So if I set all of my zones to google.com, I would not be able to use Google services when I was on this network, because instead they would all be pointing to my own assets. All right, and so we've also got this right here, which is called resolution. So DNS resolution allows your Synology to resolve addresses and host names that it does not own. So for example, if it got the query for google.com, it does not own google.com. And so you can set it up to forward to another server. And so this can really speed things up. So we're definitely gonna to wanna to enable this. And, and if you're using this only locally, as in you've not opened up port 53 on your router, which you really should not do unless you're a business, truly using this for a DNS server, you don't have to worry about limit source IP service because your router will be blocking all external connections. And then we're going to want to enable forwarders. So Google maintains two DNS servers and they're really high performance. And so the first one is 8.8.8.8. .8 and the second is 4.4.4.4. And then under forward policy, your most efficient is going to be forward first. So that means first, it's gonna to try to forward this request to Google if it doesn't have it in its own banks. Then if for whatever reason Google does not have it either, which in this case it probably shouldn't, but say Google was down or something, 
it will then query a root server by itself. And so that's the setting I would recommend for that. And just click apply. Then under log, pretty self-explanatory. Keys, this is that encryption stuff I was talking about earlier. If you're running this locally, we're gonna be skipping over this because it's honestly out of the scope of this video. But keys are used to ensure that somebody does not do what's called DNS poisoning. That's where you can take over a user's DNS server and redirect them somewhere, making them think that they're actually on google.com, but really they're on your site. That's actually one of the scariest things about public Wi-Fi. Somebody can be running their own DNS server there, and they can be forwarding your queries instead of to google.com, forwarding them to their own service, who might look exactly like google.com, but could be stealing your information. HTTPS really helps this, but if they figure out how to spoof a certificate, then there's really no way for you to know that you are not on the true google.com site. But that is out of the scope of this video, and so we're gonna go on to views. Views are another thing we're gonna be skipping over because it's really for very specific use cases where you want certain users to be forwarded to certain domains, whereas other users not. We're just gonna go skip over it because it's kind of unnecessary. And finally, into settings. So these default settings are basically how you can optimize how much of a cache your DNS server has. Leaving them default for now is just fine. If you start noticing performance issues and you've got a more powerful NAS, you can start increasing these cache sizes, especially if you've got a lot of RAM. And that way, if you're running this on a business and you'd like a larger cache size for more DNS queries stored, then it will be faster. But realistically, for a home use, this is entirely fine. All right, and so right now, this is not being used by anything on our network because nobody's asking our Synology where anything is. So there are two different ways you can set this up. You can set it up one by host or two by the router. By host means you configure it on every single client on your network. So for example, you would configure it on every single computer you have to use this Synology as a DNS server. So one quick note, you do need to make sure that your Synology has a persistent IP address on the network. It can't be changing the IP address because there's no way to resolve it because it is in charge of resolving IP addresses. So I've got a video on that that I'll link below. You can either set this up on your router or locally on your Synology. So let's first go over how to set this up on a single client to use our Synology as a DNS server. So first we're gonna note the IP address, which is right here. It's 10.0.2.10. Now we're gonna go in and go into our network preferences. I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna go up here and go into network preferences. And I'm going to go into advanced settings. And under DNS, you can see right here, I've got my actually other DNS, my main NAS running as the DNS server, but we're gonna edit this to be 10.0.2.10, which is the IP address of our Synology, which is running the DNS server. And so now it's first going to query that Synology. But something you really wanna make sure to do is add a secondary one of 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 or any other primary DNS server you'd like to use. This way, if your Synology is down, the entire network is not down. And just click OK. And so now our local computer will be using our Synology as a DNS server. So let's go in and see what we can do with this. We can test it out by creating a zoom, zone. So we'll create what's called a master zone, and it's going to be a forward zone. And I'm gonna do something here, which you should not be doing because it's gonna break your network, but for local testing, it's okay. I'm gonna type in google.com. Master DNS server 8.8.8.8, .8 doesn't really matter too much. And just click apply for now. Then from within there, we're gonna double click on it and we're going to add a record. So there are a bunch of different types of record here. The most common ones you're going to use are A types, which basically forward to an IP address C name, which forwards to a different host name. So if you'd like to always be able to type blah.com into your browser and have it go to Google, you can do that by t having a C name from blah.com to google.com. In next type, those are for mail records. And then there's TXT type, which are used for DNS validation. But we're not going to go into that right now. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to create an A type and the name we're gonna do is www.google.com. And instead of forwarding it to Google, we're going to forward it to the IP address of the Synology. 
just to see if it works and type OK. So now let's see what happens when we type www.google.com. Ah, and so funny enough right now, it's actually returning an error because Google said, OK, you have to use a certificate and I'm not currently using your certificate. So I'm going to redo this really quickly with blah.com just because I know I've never been to blah.com. All right, so I just changed it from google.com to blah.com. That way it will not have the issue. What happened there is Google has told my browser in the past to make sure to always use a certificate for the next year. It's a great security feature to really help limit DNS poisoning. And so from now on for the next year, my browser will only ever allow me to go to Google if it has a valid certificate. If the certificate was somehow spoofed, it would still work, but that is incredibly hard to do. So we've just changed this to blah.com and I've set up the same thing. So let's go to www.blah.com. And so right here you can see I typed in www.blah.com and instead of being sent to blah.com, which I don't even think exists, I was sent to my DSM's web server, which means that this worked. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually set this up with something real. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this and we're going to do this for spacerex.co. So we're gonna create a master zone for SpaceRex. So I own spacerex.co, which is my website, which I'm gonna be building up additional tutorials and things like that on. And so we're gonna set it up to be able to resolve things locally using it. That way in the future, I can have everything pointing to some asset.spacerex.com. And that way, if for whatever reason, I need that to actually open up to a separate IP address, I will be able to actually edit the master DNS server for the world and so my devices that are calling out for that host name will actually still successfully connect. This is great for things like VPN servers or anything like that where you actually want to be able to change where it routes depending on what you need to do. And it's a great thing for automation because I can change it by just changing the record on my host service and have everything run really nicely. Even better, I can do all of this without actually opening up anything to the internet. And so if we look through these, these are really designed for when you're actually hosting multiple DNS servers for an actual company. So if you have a static IP address, you can actually set this up to actually be the DNS server for your company's web server. One issue with that is if that IP address ever changes, it's going to be a long and grueling process to update all of those records. So you have to make sure that you're going to be at that business for years and you're going to have to be able to have that running for an extra few months to make sure everything gets transferred over correctly. It's one annoying thing about hosting your own DNS. The way I've got mine set up is I've got my domain name through Google, so it's incredibly easy to set up and change over records. Plus, a lot of people use Google's 8.8.8.8 service, and so hosting my DNS server through them, it's actually going to be faster because it's less querying to do. So we're just going to click OK, and now it's set up. So now let's double click on it to edit some things. Say we want to be able to type in synology.spacerex.co and be brought to DSM. All we have to do is click create, and that's an A type because we're going to be forwarding it to an IP address. We'll actually just call it NAS, it's quicker. So it's nas.spacerex.co, and the IP address of it is 10.0.2.10 and just click OK. And now finish. So now I can type in nas.spacerex.co and be able to connect to it. And I can just keep adding these. So I can create another one for my other NAS, which is my actual main tank, which is 10.0.1.40. And so I'll be able to type in nas2.spacerex.co and be brought to that. All right, so now let's just test it out. It sometimes does take a minute to update. We're gonna type in nas.spacerex.co and we're gonna do port 5000. That way we make sure to get to DSM. And just right here, we were successfully brought to, to tutorial DSM. And we try NAS2. And boom, we get brought to it successfully. But now let's try something. Let's try to go to spacerex.co. And as you can see here, it can't find it. 
even though spacerex.co is completely a valid DNS server, it's not going to be able to get to it because it's been overwritten by my personal local records. So what I've done is I've just copied over those configurations that I've got on my main DNS server to this one, so everything still runs normally. That's just one thing to note, and it's also the reason why you don't want to be modifying records that you don't own. All right, and so now the issue is if I were to try to do any of this on my phone, it wouldn't work because it's not set up with this DNS server. And so instead what I can do, instead of doing it locally for each one, is set it up on my router. So what I'm gonna do really quickly here is I'm gonna delete the manual configuration I just set up. And so if you look right here, once I deleted the configuration, there's this grayed out configuration that's my default configuration. And that is actually what it's getting from the router. In general, unless you've overwritten settings, every computer on your network is going to ask your router for what kind of DNS settings to set up. And so by modifying the router, it's incredibly easy to set up your own stuff and have it work across the board. So we're just gonna click apply. And now we're gonna go in and see how to edit the router settings. Every router is gonna be different, but I'm using a Unify U Dream Machine Pro. And so here's my Unify control panel. We're just gonna go into settings and we're going to go into networks local networks, and edit the main LAN. And we're going to set up the DHCP name servers. They've made this very confusing because it's technically, I guess it is DHCP kind of, but realistically, these are the DNS servers you'd like to use. And so I've got these set to manual, and this is my, the IP address of my main NAS, but we can overwrite that to be the IP address of that tutorial DSM that's running the DNS server right now. And here's a really important thing here, is I've also got backup DNS servers. And so I would really recommend having at least one backup and probably two backups. So my second DNS server is Google's 8.8.8.8, and the third is also Google's, but 4.4.4.4. That way, if my Synology is down, I still have DNS resolved across the network because it'll then forward onto Google. And if somehow that Google DNS server is down, which would be insane, it will forward on to the next one. And you can even do a third one here. But if all of these are down, you can pretty much just assume that the internet is down. They've got very high uptime. And we're going to click apply settings. You're going to have to look up how to do this on your own router. But now if you go into settings, you may need to refresh it. It actually takes a little while to refresh. I actually had to turn off the network and turn it back on, basically unplug it and plug it back in to get it to get a new DNS server because DNS is really designed to be something that's cached because it's got such a performance increase. And so now, as we can see here, we are now going to be first looking at 10.0.2.10. And so any device on the network now who's got default properties will be able to type in nas.spacerex.co port 5000 and be brought into this DSM. Note, we have just done this locally. Unless you've set up your Synology NAS, to actually be the DNS server for your web domain, anybody outside of your network is not going to get these DNS settings. And so it's something you can do completely on your own to set all this up. All right, and so now, honestly, that's basically it. We're going to be able to remember all of these addresses a lot more easily than trying to memorize IP addresses, and we can even change services. So it's a really quick and efficient way of having everything on your network talk to each other in an automated fashion. Because if you'd like to change services out, but you don't want to have to change everybody else's settings, you can just go in and on your DNS server, change the IP address from one to another, and all those requests will just get changed to that new IP address. It's really efficient, and it's great IT practice. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. I hope this was helpful. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.